Your event is starting and you may want to visit your channel to feature your live stream. It is streaming on my channel. And I don't know why I keep getting that messages. We got no comments in this section here. I'm going to refresh the page. Just give us a second here, folks, in case there's a stutter in the stream. I slept in the night. I had to crash after. There you go. Now all the comments are going to show up. Hi, Stetson. Thank you. I seen that. You sent an email. So did uh, Annabeck. There's a whole lot of people. You know, because this is off topic, I wasn't really expecting uh, that many people. And that's okay. Hang on, I'm going to check the audio. Make sure everything lat matches. Uh, uh. Looks good. There you go. Looks good. That's great. Now make sure because it was the last. I was running to catch up. That stream is okay. There you go. That's a bit better. That's the big thing. You got to have the, the lid up. Hi, Piano 2 Precious. I see you just showed up. Uh, MSVS, hi there, Starlight. Kate, Ketcher K, Broken Ass Oilner. Uh, Stacy Anderson. <laughs> I didn't see you there till I looked down that time. Uh, Fix It Stupid. We got Nuts for Art. Hey, bud. Laurel Adams. Thank you. 11 Brand. 11 D Brand. Bra 11? I still have a hard time with your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can beat up my scooter if you want. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Reram. So I'll be doing a uh, once a week show for half an hour pre-taped. And I'm going to be using a clip of the scooter getting busted up. So I'm going to do an electric bike show a half an hour every week. And I'm going to destroy these creatures. They're done as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to relent on them. It's a little break for me once a week for a half an hour. I'll pre-record everything and I'll put that video at the beginning of it. Oh yeah. They're, they're done as far as I'm concerned. I don't even care anymore. I'll find, I'll go get another scooter somewhere else. Uh, but that's besides the point. I got quite the show lined up for everybody tonight. I just want to make sure I say hi to a few more people. Hi Candace. Scotty girl. Thank you Australia. Um, Kevin O'Kane, Annabeck is here. Hi, Annabeck. Uh, Re Ram, did I get everybody? On uh, China, three. There we go. That's pretty good. And so I was thinking, you know, how evil are these people at nuclear PR firms right around the world? And it really, it really affected me because I. I still can't rationalize what they do, what they do. I know where magic. Anybody don't know who where magic is? 2012. His link is below the video. If you can't find, if you watch this later and you wonder who we're talking to. Hi, Craig. Uh, hi, Manny. Skywatch. A little slow, Michael Hand. I'm just trying to catch up to people. Craig Hindle. There you go. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Good Gangs 100. You show is coming. I don't know about that one. Who's you show? Looks good, folks. I wanted to cover a bunch of headlines about America. And that's what I'm going to do. Controversy after U.S. government estimates shows 40,000 microsiever thyroid doses for California infants from Fukushima. The data was not released to the public. It's a very high dose to children. That was March 6, 2012, just under a year. Uh, that's pretty creepy shit, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. UC Berkeley was off by 27 times in a study. Authors claim EPA limits for iodine-131 uh, was only three um, pico, uh, can you remember now, per liters. Uh, but the actual number is three. 
and they were they were off by 27 times. So this is something we see all the time. Iodine 131 or any time, not time about the iodine 134, or the iodine or the iodine 132, 133. Certainly not the iodine 129 with a 15 million year half life. And all of these iodines that got short half lives are actually times 10. And it takes a couple of days for that to come across the ocean. There was massive releases of different types of iodine. There was much more iodine 132, up to 10 times more. It's nine times more effective at ionizing, radiating your thyroid gland. There's also the iodine 133, which nobody bothers to talk about. But there was a study done on it, and there was a massive amount of that. That's got a short half life. But not so sure it can't make it over to Canada with the jet streams. And I know, you know, Thunderfoot says the jet stream don't exist. Ryan Dawson recently put out another video, the jet streams don't exist. Shock you, see Berkeley professor claims no matter what happens in Fukushima, it's not going to be a problem over in America. Any kind of release in Japan would be non-detectable here. And all the studies says otherwise. That was August the 5th, 2013. Once again, UC Berkeley professors and academics are the creatures on the planet. These are all lobbyists for the nuclear industry. That's what they get all their orders for. That's what they do all their experiments for. That's what all their peer review studies are about. Creating in information and pieces of the puzzle for the nuclear industry, which is well on its way to destroying the entire planet. Japan is annihilated. It's destroyed. It's contaminated from one end completely to the other. And now that I got my scooter crap out of the way, I can start tomorrow morning and not have to worry anymore about finishing the full movie of 360 headlines. 360 headlines that breaks down the entire story of Fukushima Japan, the Pacific Ocean, the jet streams, the Northern Hemisphere, the contamination, what it means, how long it lasts, what the implications are, short term, medium term, and if we're lucky, long term. And so that's going to be a really detailed 360 headlines, top picks only, to really drive the point home. The nuclear rain out, the nuclear fallout which was, is ongoing and continuous because the radiation has been recorded going up five miles right above Fukushima and another study up to nine miles above Fukushima confirmed from samples. And so that means for sure, no matter how anybody tries to argue, they can't argue that that went up to the jet stream. Not that they can because we got unbelievable amount of information from studies from the governments around the world Usually just the dispersal models of the 137 and the iodine 131. But nevertheless, you can't, they don't travel by themselves, right? And wherever there's uh, cesium 137 or 34 or iodine, but wherever there's cesium 137, a rule of thumb is just 30 times more strontium 90. Cesium uh, 137 attacks your heart. It's vicious. And that's why there were so many deaths after Fukushima, including in children. And strontium-90 is why there's so much leukemia showing up in the last couple of years in children. They're the most vulnerable, 10 to 100 times more vulnerable of, than an adult getting the same dose in the environment. 50 Beckwells, which is, <coughs> excuse me, when it comes to nuclear stuff, is really bad. But you got to realize you get 9,000 Beckwells a potassium 40 in your water and you say well that sounds pretty strange Dana well if you drink 9,000 Beckwells of potassium 40 your body off gases it because it's insignificant harmless indigenous background radiation but strontium 90 is man-made cesium 137 is man-made iodines are all man-made there are natural iodines but none of the none of them the ones we talk about are only the nuclear radioactive ionizing radiation and isotopes that uh, are ongoing from Fukushima and let me see if I can catch up with anything down here before I keep going I got a lot more headlines I want to cover hi Lori you were late that's okay 
Uh, pop, 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 pop. I'm trying to keep up here. Well, it don't look like my. I'm going to refresh my page over here and see if I can get the comments at the same time. Come back over to the headlines. Cesium and iodine, both at least 600% EPA maximum containment levels in Hawaii milk. 600 times. And people say, well, Dan, it's just pico curries. Well, a radioactive atom will give you cancer. So pico curries is huge, see? And radioactive atoms are still raining out. They're in your communities, they're in your water, they're in your food. Go and check out Nubu Magic's site. He's been covering it nonstop. And he's like myself. He sticks to the topic. I venture all over the place. and But he does it really well, right? So it's really important that you get another narrative besides mine. I'm only reading headlines. That's all I really do. I tell you the truth. And because I know if I step outside of those boundaries, that'll get used to discredit me. Just like the scooter today, I had to get rid of it because it was being used to discredit me. Because upgrading uh, is a liability when it comes to Daymac or St. Clair's Motorsports. And I know if people don't know what's going on, you have to go check out the last video I put up where I destroy a scooter. Uh, once again, there will be a cesium and iodine at 600% above EPA maximum containment level. It's going to take a couple of days for me to work it all out in my systems, folks. Sorry. We had a lot of fun today. But it was very stressful. That was April, April 11, 2011. 600%. You gotta realize the ocean currents, right? That's our the corrosion current that's coming across the ocean. The Pacific Garden sweeps it out, and then the major currents carry it across the Pacific Ocean. Not to mention the jet streams and the clouds and convection and evaporation, but the currents at the surface of the ocean. The ocean is split up into many layers as you go down, and there are different temperatures, there are different speeds, there are different salinities, and they have their own. A uh, thousand year cycle, say to speak, so to speak. But the surface currents, that's where all the phytoplankton hang out. And so the phytoplankton are the very basis of the food chain that actually, actually create the oxygen. And nutrients are swept up from the ocean floor up to the surface to, uh, that's how the ocean works. And now because of radioactive fallout, Think about rain on the ocean when it's radioactive. All, as all that falls down into the ocean, we're, we're not talking about the stuff that's the plumes that are coming out underneath Fukushima into the ocean, three to four hundred deaths a minute. It's probably a thousand tons a day, a highly radioactive water, extraordinary amount of isotopes under Fukushima are getting swept out from the hot coriums, from the exploder rods. They create their own neutrons. The X rays are splitting the atoms. The site was blown up uh, three different times and it detonated all these rods and aerosoled them and atomized them and but also two rods all over that site and rods also went out into the ocean were carried out by the tsunami debris that was coming out the reactors exploded and the debris traveled up to two miles away pieces of it not part of, not atoms that were pieces and that was carried out with the tsunami and then it fell off off the coastline and what that means though is you have an unhinged monster, you know, off the coastline whipping out isotopes that was made from MOX fuel, which is two million times more toxic than any other reactor on the planet, according to all the media. Sometimes you can trust them, sometimes you can't. I mean, that's a serious, that's a serious uh, threat. Um... Let me catch up to a few people. Hi, Illusion is over. Catch her, Stacy. Uh, ba -ba, yeah, ba -ba. Here we go. Nuts for her. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, nuts for her. I agree. Uh, creates awareness and ability to manage the anxiety. I mean, that's why I'm here all the time. That's why I'm back here again tonight, even though I was brutally tired. It's physically exhausting to do what we've done today, to destroy something like that in order to save your reputation. You know, it's an insult. But it's also, it was the kickoff to destroying those people. But it does take a lot, Eddie, yeah? Hi, Lonnie. Anna Beck. 
I'm back and forth saying hi to people, and I'm and I'm reading headlines of anybody who's just joining the stream. And the conversation is on the left of the screen, is scrolling down. We're live. If the conversation below the video is rendered, last night it was two hours late. And that way, anybody's trying to watch the video after the stream, they're not going to wait around for two hours very often, so you lose all kinds of views. It's quite the game they're playing on my site, to be expected, right? I'm tearing apart all the paradigms, and I'm maneuvering these people so that they're discredited. True facts. And Stetson uh, was answering Annabeck. I'm lost. I'll come back down to the headlines, come back up here in a second. Long Finally, the comments are catching up with the comments on that, but I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Study author. Now, 20,000 excess U.S. debts after Fukushima, not 14,000. Follow-up article looking at age, groups, and cities. And think about people in cities, right? It's hard to track what's really going on there. Uh, January 19, 2012. Air Friday filter. Radioactivity at 300% of normal background Los Angeles area dust. 350 counts per minute in St. Louis area. Ionic breeze. And by the way, anybody's watching this, Nubu Magic keeps up with all the most recent stuff. Like most of the stuff I'm talking about is back in 2011. Because of the tsunami, all the headlines got hit away. Right? Because everything was about the tsunami. And any headlines that were coming out were being buried immediately. Under this, you know, under Fukushima or, or Japan, got buried, see? And so I keep up on top of that, but the Nubra Magic keeps up on top of recent stuff. And then he brings in his collective, his experience of that. So if you're truly trying to find out what's going on, you have to go check Nubra Magic out. You know, that's the right thing to do. He's just very, very reliable. He's not going to fabricate anything. And he understands. And that's why he's like myself, where he's here all the time. Uh, out blogging, right? But 350 times insignificant normal background radiation. When you got to think about water is 9,000 becquels disintegrations per second of potassium 40 decays. Well, if you had 9,000 decays of iodine, it's good boy you. If you got 9,000 decays and then 300 times, that's 350 times 9,000. Which is insignificant background radiation, and that's how they let. That's how they word that. Radioactivity at 300 times normal background. Well, the normal background for Los Angeles, I think, it was 7,500 potassium 40 disintegration per second. They're not talking about potassium 40 in the air filters, okay, at all. But they equate it that way. And that's how you get confused. That's how you're misled. That's how you run into obstacles because your loved ones are hearing normal background radiation is 9,000 and you're worried about a couple of hundred. You're worried about a couple of hundred because that's the right thing to be, but you can't talk to people that think of background radiation in the same context, right? Like your bananas has background radiation. It's like 12 becquels a second of decay. You eat the banana, you off-gas 12 becquels. It's like the thermostat or a cruise control on your car. But if I was to fill this house up, would I get cancer? No. With bananas. If I fill the house up with natural rocks with natural uranium into it through 38, would I get cancer? No. If I was swimming in the ocean with natural uranium 235 in it, would I get cancer? No. If I was swimming in a swimming pool with uh, a cup full of uranium or a cup full of strontium or a cup full of cesium in it, would I get cancer? Probably so. Depending on and if they just threw it in the water at the same time and I swam away from it. I can swim out the other side and get away from it. Yeah. But if it was sitting in the pool for an hour and you ingested some of that, that's different. Getting it on your skin is one thing. You got extraordinary. Your skin is amazing for keeping radiation off you. But when you ingest it, it sequesters in your body, in your blood, in your bones for strontium-90, in your muscles, CCM, likes the organs. Cesium also likes your heart and it attacks it really hard right away. And so you have to eat healthy. There's only one thing out there you can do is not touch GMO genetically modified foods. There's no potassium, no magnesium, no calcium. Everything is engineered. All the nutrients and minerals is engineered out. 
There's just tiny, tiny, tiny parts per million left. And the engineer didn't five toxins that never existed in food before and you can't wash it off. And so how can you be healthy if you're eating GMO? All craft dinner is GMO. Uh, craft dinner. All craft products are GMO. You all your pharmaceuticals now. Just a small percentage is not GMO. You have to look for anything that's not GMO. These shops allegedly have it, but it's probably contaminated. You just can't trust them. People have to go back to growing GMO. And growing in ra growing food in radiation, uh, that's, that's what you're stuck with. But if you eat GMOs and you're, you're eating radiated, drinking radiated water, drinking radiated, walking in radiated environments from the fallout from Fukushima, like the, the, the radiation from the sun has nothing to do with Fukushima. The radiation with the sun... The best way to think about it is if you drink something, you pee it out. Uh, but except it's gone right away, say. Right a lot quicker than that. Uh, say you're chewing on gum for a few minutes and you spit it out. <coughs> That's what walking in the sun is really like. It's not like you're going to get isotopes, okay? It's just local, insignificant background radiation. But if you're out walking in the sunshine every day, you won't get cancer. But if you're out walking in the sunshine in March or April of 2011, you ingested hot particles. And a single hop particle will give you cancer. Cancer takes a while to grow. That's the other issue. And they don't tell you. Right? What's going on. Now, there's a phenomenon known about nuclear fallout and nuclear uh, contamination, living in contamination environments is where it makes you sterile. And it also causes lesions to your organs just with low say 50 disintegrations and all the numbers we're talking about here tonight are much higher than that and because that rain will fill in your country it can't go anywhere where's it going to go it's not going to turn to fairy dust and just disappear oh uranium's got a 4.5 million year life but it hit the ground so it's okay now <laughs> forget about it it's all right now turn to fairy dust had it stayed up in the air, it would have been stayed radioactive for 450 years, but you breathe it in, it's okay. That's what they want you to believe. If it lands on you, it's okay. If you get it on your hands, put your hands in your eyes, it's no big deal. It won't transfer. That's what they want you to think. It's the complete opposite. You can't smell it, you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't feel it, you can't friggin' taste it. Well, you know, that's debatable. If you're, if you're in a plume, you will taste it. You'll taste the metallic taste in your mouth. And I got off track. Let me go over to the next one. Amount of radiation in three gallons of milk from Hawaii surpasses the annual maximum containment levels set by the EPA. The amount of radiation in three gallons of milk is more than you're allowed to have naturally during a whole year. Um, April 11, 2011, see? April 10, 2011, Arkansas milk 300% above the EPA maximum contaminated level for radioactive iodine 131 11 days ago. So March the 31st, 2011. Within two weeks, Arkansas's milk was 300% above. And in that same period, Hawaii was seeing a whole year's dose of which is insignificant radiation background, not iodine, but insignificant radiation. There is no acceptable levels of uh, radioactive isotopes or radioactive radiation. For it to be putting out the, the decays means the isotope is there. You can't have disintegrations without the isotope being there. Or the radioactive particle, or the radioactive atom. There's a lot of ways actually you can do that. So if I took, I can put my equipment close to radiation and it becomes irradiated i can take it away and say that was uranium well my equipment becomes irradiated uh, for 4.5 billion years times 10 everything is times 10 so let me keep going uh hi pam now there was another phenomenon and there was another phenomenon uh where they sprayed salt water on the reactors that had never on a melted reactors and melted fuel pools this is never done before and but there was a study done about it uh, two studies 
And what they describe is a urethal peroxide uh, uh, carbon, like a carbon fiber buckyball shape with around 60, I uh, can't remember. But anyway, they ingest in the particles and they turn these little balls into little nuclear engines. These are one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. They're the microns, you know, the, the two microns, say. Uh, and so you, there's, it's really hard to get an air filter that can filter something like that out for starters. It's, it's not salutable with water. These little nuclear engines can also ingest strontium. They can ingest um, cesiums. And they say, well, like cesium-134 got a two-year half-life. See, that's always a lie because it's times 10. It decays by half into another radioactive isotope, and then half is left. Right? And then that whole process keeps going times 10 before it actually decays. And let me hit the next one. Head research at Boulder, Colorado, a hot spot for Fukushima fallout, April 6, 2012. And they claim none of the other U.S. and Canadian samples came came close to it. Uh, soil measurements, UCB, was 296 becquerels a kilogram. And I can't find what it is. That's okay. By March the 21st, this is March 28, 2011, but by March 21st, five nuclear isotopes from Fukushima were detected in Seattle. That's iodine 131, 132, um, cesium 134, cesium 137, and trillium 132, which I think turns the iodine 132. Uh, cesium 134, cesium 137s. Well, cesium 134 is a two year half life times 10, so that's 20 years. That'll be in that community. But also, there was cesium 137, that's a 30 year half life, so 300 years in that community in particular. But uh, the plume didn't just go in and smash into, um, we got the government's model, the US government's model, not to mention Swiss and Belgium, Australia, France, and all the other uh, models that are out there. Japan created 5,000 models in the first 52 days, and they hid it from the public, the, the aerosol dispersions. And so Japan, but we got the numbers all across Japan, right from one end to the other end, the minimum numbers I found that uh, correlated across the entire country, say the average numbers, uh, was 300,000 becquels. Lots and lots and lots of it was a million becquels after contaminate, decontamination, 40 million becquels up by Tokyo, lots of places, up north and south to the east of Fukushima, all the way to the west coast, all the way to 1,200 miles away, large deposits. Also plutoniums, and also you got to realize once again there's a link below about those uh, urethal peroxide buckyballs. You need really need to check that out. It's difficult to wrap your mind around. So read it a number of times. Read it again the next day. Japan's nuclear accident seen from Seattle Science News. That was uh, five nuclear isotopes from Fukushima was detected in Seattle. Iodine 131, iodine 132. Trillium-132, cesium-134, cesium-137. The reactors run on plutonium. The reactors run on uranium. The, think about Fukushima. Think about Chernobyl. was one-third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Think about how Chernobyl was graphite. Think about in Chernobyl, they went out on the roofs, and they only worked for 15 seconds, and then they went home. They got their deadly doses. In Fukushima, they take the homeless off the streets, and they, they murder them. That's murder, whether they die then or die two weeks later. And that's why the people in Chernobyl were only allowed on the roof for 15 seconds. But their fuel was nowhere near as dangerous as Fukushima. Fukushima's reactors are three times the size of Chernobyl. Fukushima reactors were 100% meltdown, three of them. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. They got the rods back in. They did have a meltdown, though, right? And they're still dealing with that. There's 3,500 square miles that are still uninhabitable. The study shows that there's not jack animals down there. Don't listen to the media. That's lies. That's manipulation. That's the that's the, the potassium 40 crew that are pro nuclear, right? 
you know, General Electric doesn't just make nuclear shit, okay? They make toasters and fridges, and if the media wants advertisement from these monsters, and you're paying for all that, then uh, they have to play the game. But that's what they're there for. They bought into that, right? All media celebrities, all media personalities are, um, are, are vicious, vicious creatures. That's how they got to where they are. That's a vicious world to work in. It's a cutthroat world, okay? It's a very, very naughty place to live in. California nuke plant detected 4,000% more iodine 131 than UC Berkeley during the Fukushima peach. Once again, UC Berkeley, scum of the earth, the dirt bags of the planet, the biggest manipulating machine out there, lying, can't do their job. You give them all the money on the planet, you give them all the equipment they ever wanted, you give them the sharpest minds you ever wanted, and they still can't do their fucking job unless their job is to destroy you and lie to you and manipulate you. That's all they do. They just can't trust him anymore. On December 9, 2013, there was a director who made a statement that we saw plutonium from Fukushima in the New Mexico desert. The local and regional contamination of plutonium in the environment, that's PLU, by the way, have resulted from nuclear accident because plutonium, P-O-L-O, you actually have that in your body. It's harmless, indigenous, normal, insignificant background radiation. But plutonium... 238, 239, 240, 241 is a 24,000 year half life times 10. It's 240,000 year half life. There's Zoe snore, snoring. Hang on, I'll come back over and say hi to a couple people. I get pretty messy sometimes. What have I got going on here? Oh. Firefox keeps wanting to do an update on me. You got to watch out for that. Okay, hang on, I'm going to jump over to the page for a second. And we got a late stream tonight. And it's just the way it worked out, unfortunately, for everybody. That's okay. Candace got flat. Yours is showing spam, Candace. J330. I just unspammed you, hopefully. They had no roof at Fukushima to clean up. Just no roof. Right. Well, there was other roofs there, yeah. But you still had to go clean up the whole area, clean up the rods that blew all over the place. They went in with bull, bulldozers originally. Workers are in there all the time. The rods in the topsoil were a rain. The rods would have sank down to pieces of rods. So people are walking over this all the time. That's why they're paving over the whole bloody site. But then again, they got over a thousand tanks there. The tanks are, and I kid you not, they're duct tape and plastic pipes. Just need a big earthquake to come screaming through there. And General Electric is PayPal, Gina. Hi, Mark. And Candace got Mark to spam again. Hang on. Not spam. I'll go add you to the list again, Candace. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I made a mistake. That's why you didn't show up. Hi, Adam. Adam's got Mark to spam. And Adam is marked they are not really pro nuke, they are pro green. Yeah. Uh hi Ruben. Let me see if I can catch up to everybody here. Hi Dean H. Fukushima Bucky Ball Society says Nubu Magic. Yeah. Everybody's sucking Bucky Balls now, whether they like it or not. You know, that's what's the sick part about all of this. I got on spam Adam Celine again. All your comments from Mark to spam. Google has changed it. And so now if you show up spam after the video is up, I can on spam everybody. Before it was only like just a very couple at the top. And you get 20 or 30 people down below it. And so I have to go back through all my videos and, and check all the boxes and let whoever's stuck in that nightmare on, on spam them so google updated that a couple of days ago uh which i thought was really strange and we come back down we'll jump back over i'll do that one more time make sure everything's working good everything looks good yeah we're all yeah no we're magic we're all so that's pretty cool 
Let me see what else we got here. Duct tape and bailing wire. There you go. No room magic covered all of this stuff, uh, folks, as it happens. He gives it a couple of days, sorts it all out, and then he does a good uh, 8, 10, 12 minute video. And even the 2 and 3 minute videos are the really informative ones too, of course. Let's come back over to the headlines. And we'll keep going on that. I haven't checked the time, see how we're doing. I came on. I guess I better go check the time before I do anything else. Hang up. Just to make sure I don't keep everybody. Okay, we're good to go. Here we go again. Let's keep rolling. Let me see if we got any more information on that. And there was a, with the plutonium came the uh, americium and cesium too, right? In the desert, that last article I was talking about. Uh, former Department of Energy official criticizes UC Berkeley professor for comparing ingestion of radioactive iodine to air travel. So if you get in an airplane, right, the theory is you get a higher dose of radiation. You take a Geiger counter, which is going to show a higher level of insignificant background radiation. If you flew around an airplane for your entire life, like pilots, like air stewardess, and people like that, the chances of getting cancer are still really tiny from something, getting that little bit more of indigenous, insignificant, normal radiation that all, everything on this planet is already acclimated to. Everything on the planet is acclimated to the insignificant background radiation that we have to apologize for all the time because it's used in these equations and it has nothing to do with equals mc square but a uc berkeley professor compared ingesting radioactive iodine which goes right to the thyroid and ionizes your thyroid and gives you cancer to getting radiation when you fly in an airplane completely different his, his child got ionizing radiation from a contaminated site and he could prove it he'd be suing them Okay, that same person. These are the loathsome scumbags on the planet. April 6, 2011. So they didn't waste any time. Not even a friggin' month. Gone by and earth are lying already at UC Berkeley, right? Don't drink the rainwater, says the state of Virginia. March the 31st, 2011. As a result of the incident with the nuclear power plant in Japan, several EPA ear monitors have detected... Very low levels of radioactivity material in the U.S. Blah, blah. There are high levels. They're massive. California had 40 million beckles in the seaweed in a single bed of kelp. Think about the radiation getting washed out to the coastline. Remember, California's only had a drought for two years. Lucky for them. Lucky for them, huh? They're so lucky. Because if you think you had all that rain in California and they were producing a massive amount of food, uh, fruit and food, how much cancers will be going up? California is just screwed. That's where all the plumes, the biggest parts of the plumes seems to go to. It's the same thing with the ocean currents. Remember, and I was telling you before I, I broke away from it, if the ocean currents travel at a mile an hour, right, and they travel up to nine, but they travel at a mile an hour at the surface, they get over to Canada in 227 days. Not six years. Not ten fucking years. The rain picks it up and carries it ahead. Because it disperses. It doesn't dilute. The ocean can't dilute an isotope. It doesn't work that way. right? Ken, Ken Buesler from Woods Hole and Oceanographic Institution made the, the stupidest statement ever heard that... CC-137, 1,500 miles off the coastline, magically turns into potassium-40. And don't worry, because you're allowed up to 90,000 beckles of potassium-40 in drinking water in certain parts of America. It's actually only one part. It's extraordinary. You've done that. Then they used that as a measuring stick and said, oh, well, we can put 90,000 beckles of cesium per liter. And this is actually only a, a cup of water for potassium-40, which is extraordinary. It usually never more. But if you drink it, you off gas 90,000 beckles of potassium 40. If you drink CC 137, 90,000 beckles, you die. And you can't off gas that. That all sequesters in your body and turns into tumors. There's a big difference between something that goes in your body, stays in your body, and gives you freaking tumors and melts your organs, 
then it is something that you off gas naturally that's insignificant and indigenous and can't harm a fly literally because it's normal that's what uh, the planet is made of is insignificant radiation but when you weaponize it and put it to a chain reaction by the way we don't even talk about the missing fuel pools over unit number one Unit number three and the ones that melted down and caught fire at unit number four and blew up two times in that one. Unit one and three blew their tops. Unit two melted down, had a detonation. But unit one and three completely lost their fuel pools. They got, they got one left each and it's badly destroyed. It's cracked from the earthquakes and they got to pour water in it perpetually till the end of time. And so that's releasing all these massive amounts of radioactive isotopes because of the broken rods, the neutrons, the splitting of the atoms, the radioactive isotopes being created. Think about the rods blown for a mile all over that area. Each piece is creating isotopes on its own till the end of time. These are plutonium and uranium rods and pellets and that were fused into chunks and flown and then aerosoled and put up into our environment and up to our ionosphere, into our tropospheres and into our jet streams. And so they rain out. Remember, Canada, Health Canada, there's a link below, flew along the entire coastline of Canada for 18 hours and 715 feet, 50 feet. On March 19, March 20, there's a link below to their PDF file. And they're talking about the plume and it was spiking. And they let the children go to school. They let uh, their family members go out in the garden. They let all their friends, all their loved ones, all their cousins, all their aunts, all their uncles be exposed to it so they can have a paycheck. They turn their back on everybody out there. And the government's helped them by turning it into a national security issue. And they're not allowed to tell you. But that doesn't uh, count when you're murdering people down the road because of the cancer you made them get. You didn't give them the opportunity. Remember, Russia in the late 40s evacuated 7,500 communities and 9,000 square miles are still evacuated. Ten years later, they had another issue. They had to evacuate another 1,000 square miles. A decade later, they had another incident and they had to evacuate another 1,000 square miles. 7,500 communities, 11,000 square miles because they done a moral and ethical thing. Canadian government stabbed us to debt and the Americans stabbed us to debt with buckyballs. They lied to us for a paycheck. They continue to lie today. They're continuing to manipulate you. They're continuing and they know. And they know. And they're taking all the precautions themselves they can. For, right? They're doing everything they can for themselves so that the government will always remain. They're trying to enforce a police state because they know as this breaks, people are going to snap. But you got to eat healthy. That's the way you get away from the cancers. you got to eat healthy. But remember, the Philippines got hammered with 195 mile an hour sustained winds. We've never seen nothing like that in a storm. There are a couple of spots on the planet where it exceeds 200 miles an hour during certain uh, weather patterns because of high range mountains and the passes. But these are not, we're talking about storms. 195 mile an hour. It was a 100 mile wide F4 tornado. Took out 44 provinces. There's a link below where I broke it down. How the, the two typhoons converged over Japan and Fukushima. Picked up all that radiated water. Picked up all, liberated all those isotopes from the entire country. Which is radiated from one end to another end. These are energy, these buckyballs, these radioactive particles, these are pure energy, they're the purest energy in the universe. There's nothing purer than chain reaction, man-made. I mean, these came from supernovas as it was. They were refined, put through chain reaction, uh, refined, and then they got rid of the impurities, made it even more finer, and released into our environments all the licenses agreements for all the nuclear power plants which are actually military industrial complexes that make directed energy weapons isotopes remember those fancy lasers on ships that they're going to use to murder you and your loved ones with and the victims 
and the impoverished people of the planet with. These are, you can't have a laser weapon without radioactive isotopes, the most hideous stuff imaginable. And these radioactive isotopes, they're only good for a short while in a weapon, but they're still deadly till the end of time. They'll release that right back into our environment. What about one of these planes up there with all this radioactive material on it and has a crash? You're going to have a radioactive wasteland around that. That's why we can we should never be allowed to have radioactive isotopes in, in directed energy weapons. If you have an accident, you're going to contaminate everything. Think of them as dirty bombs. You don't care about that. The military was firing 20... 2.5 million dirty bombs in Iraq and Afghanistan for nine years every month. 2.5 million. 2.5 million bullets that are uranium-238. Got americium, plutonium contaminations into it. Neptunium contamination to it. All the heavy metals, all the radioactive material left over from the production of plutonium, uranium for nuclear fission, fusion, fission rather, is used for weapons. Their license agreement says it goes in the sarcophagus, they can't build one, but their license agreement says they put it in a sarcophagus till the end of time. They dump it in the oceans, they go into poor people's countries and fire it. Fallujah right now, 70-80% to 80 of the children are deformed because of uranium-238. Now if you want to think about what radiation in your community can do to you, you need to take a look at that. There was a story came out recently about the deep about the children being born that are deformed and the government is hiding the statistics in America and they're frightened, apparently. It's frightening, the statistics of deformed children that have never showed up before, but just recently in the last year and a half, two years, are showing up more and more. Gee, I wonder where all that came from. Florida man has third most... Florida rain, this is EPA. Florida rain has the third most cesium-134 and the fifth most iodine-132 of 72 samples taken in the U.S. April 15, 2001. 72 samples of iodine-131 and cesium-134 in the U.S. 74, 72 sam samples. So they can't deny it showed up when they got 72 samples. How can you deny that? Right? How can you deny that? April 13th, a month later, 2011. Feds have made radioactive xenon-133 from Fukushima detected two days ago in Washington State. There was a big plume came through, right? There's models out there. That was the Wall Street Journal. But oh no, Dana never came over, Dana. You're crazy, Dana, for saying radiation from Fukushima came over to America. That's just crazy talk, Dana. That's so crazy. How dare you, Dana? I got the models, folks. Florida had the highest iodine-131 reading up to April 17, 2011. That's just the first month. Had the highest iodine reading in the first month. So they got readings from everywhere else. How else do you get to be the highest reading? It was not everywhere else. CTBTO monitoring station. March 22nd, March 23rd. And the story came out April 17th. So they knew it in a couple of weeks after Fukushima. Florida was hammered. We know that. We got all the headlines. New Hampshire, radioactive iodine at 12,000 atoms. Atoms. That's the buckyballs, okay? You ingest a single atom, you end up with cancer in four or five or six years. You, you ingest a lot of it, you end up with serious autoimmune deficiencies, you end up with serious cancer, and you also uh, got to realize, folks, that if you eat healthy, you deny cancer the ability to grow. So your body will grow uh, a cyst around these. It'll grow, they'll grow hardened cancers around it. And then you got the link below about DC and how that reduces cancer. So, you know, what your body does is your body basically tries to build a sarcophagus around wherever the radioactive atom or particle or isotope is is um, sequestered at in your body and so if you eat if you eat healthy you deny cancer the ability to grow if we didn't have if we had nutrition in your food right there wouldn't be as much uh, the 
and you also a lot of diabetes from this stuff. There's also a lot of leukemia because the strontium 90 goes right into your bones, right? It, it acts like your bones. It gets into children's teeth. There's been a lot of studies about this. 12,000 atoms per square meter in the sediment. And these buckyballs, they're not solutable in water. And so they're easy to reliberate it with storms and wind and rain. And children are playing in the grass and soil. And so you got to learn to live with this. you got to learn to find natural food. you got to think about turmeric, 600 peer review academic studies about the different properties of the spice known as turmeric. It's very good. It's amazingly good for you. And uh, once again, i got to remember to include all that at the end of that one and a half hour Fukushima documentary that I'm putting together. i got to remember at the end of that to put in all these cancer remedies and natural uh, cancer fighters, right? Just struck me that that's probably the most important thing I'll ever do, besides the, laying the entire story out there, is putting in, you know, a, a, how to survive in the the new world nuclear order. Fukushima forecast large radiation cloud near in California on April 11th. This was April 7, 2011, putting out the forecast. This was the Norwegian Institute for Ear Research. Man, oh man, this always cracks me up. So if you wonder what I'm doing here, sometimes it really gets under my skin. It's a pretty rare. I think it's probably only the second time you'll see me light up a cigarette. And these cigarettes got don't have 4,000 chemicals in it before you go yelling at me. The reason cigarettes are bad is there's 4,000 chemicals in it, okay? They've been doing studies on nicotine for 50 friggin' years, and they still haven't been able to link it to cancer. They never once done a study on the 4,000 chemicals in the cigarette because they can link them all to the cancers. And the reason you're legally allowed to use 4,000 chemicals in cigarettes is because the EPA, in their, all their wisdom, because they love you so much, grandfathered in 65,000, are the most toxic chemicals on the planet with no environmental, no human impact studies. Right? And because of that, some dickhead said, hey, I got a great idea. Let's put 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, I got a better idea. Let's put a filter on it so we can make the particles smaller so they can get through the liners of your lungs and then get into your brain area and you can get cancer up there too. Because that's what filters does. These got no filters, and I can't really smoke a cigarette. I'm going to take a couple of puffs. But uh, they're natural cigarettes with no nicotine or um, no chemicals. So everything you're buying in the shop is guaranteed to kill you because it's got 4,000 chemicals. Right? And that's why they're trying to ban it so deadly. It's because those 4,000 chemicals, right, those sniffers they're going to be sending it will be able to smell that, and they'll get disoriented, and there'll be false positives from those chemicals you got on your clothing from someone smoking cigarettes. Well, the, the chemicals from this one is just nicotine. I'm not apologizing, I'm just telling you. I'll smoke if I want to. You know, I'm a big boy, I don't need to ask anybody's permission. And when you think of it, I live on the coastline of British Columbia. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's spectacular. I'm right on the ocean. It's an amazing place to live. There's 26,000 islands here, and they're all polluted. The plumes from Fukushima, think about a big swimming pool. If you dump a big five-gallon bucket every 15 minutes into that big swimming pool, a black dye or red dye or green dye, at some point, the whole swimming pool is going to be green or black or red, right? If you keep dumping five-gallon buckets in every five minutes, Think about a thousand gallons of radioactive material. Think about these isotopes that a glass of water has 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton. They're the basis of the food chain in the ocean. They create the oxygen, 50% of the oxygen on the planet. If you dropped a single isotope into that glass, you kill them all. And there's another trillion other creatures in that glass of water from the ocean, 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton. And... The trillions of other creatures all die because of a single isotope. Well, when it rains out on the ocean, all those isotopes fall down to the bottom of the ocean. All the way down, they're killing the creatures in the ocean. 
The, the currents bring it right back up to the surface with the nutrients, because that's what the ocean does, and it kills everything up there again. And the cycle never stops. It doesn't go down and lie and get buried. Only heavy stuff does that. These these things are microns, okay? They're not going to go down and be heavy and work their way down into the sediment on the ocean floor. And I know a few things about that, okay? Because I spent 14 years as a commercial diver. Six hours a day on the ocean floor. And I paid a serious price for it. But I'm just telling you, that's the way it works. Right? So it's not just the jet streams. It's not just the fallout in your community. It's that friggin' ocean. And as that ocean, we've seen what happened to the Philippines. We've seen what happened to Tonga. Right? Sustained winds of 175 miles an hour. Took out the entire, you know, it's only 8,000 people. But they're precious. I don't care about people being impoverished or poor. That doesn't make them less of a person. Because they were victims all their lives. Because they had been oppressed all their lives. That doesn't make them less. The fact they can smile makes them better than most people out there. The fact they can hold their heads up and keep working. Uh, looks like my computer is going to crap out on me if I don't plug it in. Better plug it in. That wasn't very nice. <sighs> That's probably the most I ever smoked of a cigarette in six months. <laughs> That's because it's burning away my hand. Hang on, i got to have one more close. So that cigarette got no, no chemicals in it. But it's got a lot of particles. Not saying it's good for you. Just saying that's my choice. That's how I'm getting away from nicotine. Because once I realized why I couldn't escape it, it was because of the 4,000 chemicals. I switched to the, not, the, the no chemicals. And I don't smoke. I smoke one-tenth of what I did. And, you know, I really don't smoke very much. I usually only have two or three puffs and then I kill it. Uh, it's more like that urge. But I don't get the withdrawals. I don't need cigarettes at night time. I don't wake up in the morning and want a cigarette. I don't wake up in the morning and want buckyballs either, but I get them. So. Ugh, it's crazy stuff. Fukushima radiation, radioactive plume contaminated the entire northern hemisphere during a relative short period. That was 40 days. right? I showed you that model. This is a different story. Fukushima air mass hits California after 311 and went north to Oregon, Washington, and Canada. Fukushima air mass. I like that one. That's a new one. Fukushima air mass. Uh, let me see if I can teach you how to say the proper word. Fukushima plume. Death plume. Plume. Cancer takes a few years to kill you. You're not all going to fall down dead in the streets. You're not going to see even Hollywood portray that. I'm certainly not going to try to portray that. People do fall dead if they get into the CCM clouds. We've seen that in Fukushima where the hair fell off their bodies and they puked and died. Firefighters, policemen, first responders, seven people on one shopping street died in Fukushima outside of the in Diachi itself, right? Outside of Diachi on the street. But the plume that went over North America in 40 days blanketed North America with CCM-137 it's got a 30-year half-life times 10, 300 years. It, it's not going to travel by itself without uranium and plutonium and without the buckyballs. You know, the uranium never went one way. Plutonium went another way. Cesium went another way. And iodine went another way. Strontium went another way. Right? It doesn't work that way. Wherever one went, the rest of it is sure to follow. It's like Hillary Clinton. Wherever Hillary goes, black water is sure to slaughter. Wherever... The plumes go, all the other stuff is sure to give you cancer. Uh, they were talking about Beckles per square meters. Let me see. I got to tell you, it was too complicated. I'm not going to waste time on it. There was Xenon 133 also in that plume. Uh, there was a high concentration of radiation hit the U.S. and Canada. The plume was rich in cesium 137 and close to the surface from Vancouver southward, also Hawaii and Florida, October 28th. 2011, Xenon-133, Cesium-137 from Fukushima Daiichi Military Industrial Complex's nuclear power plant. That's a byproduct, right? They need a million gallons a minute to cool the reactors. A million gallons a minute. Or the site would turn into a big sinkhole anyway. 
<coughs> excuse me. Uh, that was uh, October 28, 2011. That story came out. Total disposition of CT-137 kilometers Beckwold's showed the entire northern hemisphere and half the southern hemisphere, half the southern hemisphere in 40 days. And it rains out for the next decade because it went up to the troposphere and the upper atmosphere. Blah! Uh, fear winds. Hot particles bombarded west coast of U.S. and Canada. Contaminated farms, food sources in the U.S., and there's a radioactive debris island twice the size of Texas. 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 With a few thousand dead Japanese amongst it. You know, with boats and ships and homes and cars and people still in that dead And that's something we talked about on this before, where if we're going to tackle this, if we're going to go all the way, my computer just went kabooey on me, if we're going to go all the way with it, we we got to think about charting planes to go out and look for this, right? we got to think about making drones that can go out and deal with this uh, for numbers and find the true numbers. we got to think about uh, leasing satellite uh, photography um locations we got to think about all of that so we can actually get a handle on all this because the system is not going to tell you the truth the system is going to marginalize everything and that's kind of what i thought about is this unplugged or something it's not going to come up okay well i guess that's it for that part tonight we'll just have to wing it from here on out that's what i do anyway let me come up to the top part Hour and three minutes. Okay, we'll call it a night. Thanks, folks. We'll catch you tomorrow night. I didn't realize I was talking so long. It's a good thing my computer died because I would have went out for another ten minutes. <laughs> uh, like once again, we'll be back tomorrow night. I'll probably be back on schedule again tomorrow night and the night after because I got rid of my frustration and anxiety today. It wasn't the elegant list, uh, I can say. It was a lot of fun. Too bad the audio didn't come out a little bit better, but it's still acceptable. I'm going to chop out that piece of the bike getting destroyed and the guitar. And that's going to be once a week. I'll be posting up a half an hour electric bike show on a Reg Sinclair Motorsports ass and Daymac once a week, every week for a half an hour show. But I'm also going to inform everybody about electric bikes, about the laws, about the good, about the bad, about how this works. Best way to get mileage out of these things. I've been using them for 14 years, so I know a few things or two, okay? Plus, I ran the biggest commercial diving operations in the north and the west coast of Canada, on the east coast of Canada. I was a commercial diver for 14 years. I can bring a lot into that conversation. And we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Uh, thanks for thanks for the support today, folks. meant a lot to me. It really, truly did. It's a rare occasion I ask something like that from anybody. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the last video where I smashes up a scooter and you'll figure it out from there. The video below before it is a video explanation of the whole nonsense. And, um, yeah, you know, that's that really affected me. And there's no reason to do it. There's no reason to demonize my friend and his wife. And call me a thief. I had to put an end to that. And I did. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And uh, otherwise I won't stop talking. So here we go. We'll try to sign out. I probably got to sign.